Today we're going to be checking out the DJI Focus Pro, which is essentially designed to give your cine lenses, which are usually 100% manual focus, autofocus. And that's exactly what you're seeing here. So right now I have a SLR Magic 35mm T1.3 cine lens, which is purely 100% manual focus. And because of this DJI LiDAR, I'm able to walk forward and walk backwards and still be able to keep myself in focus without having to do anything at all. Before we get started, I want to mention that I bought the Focus Pro with my own money, this is not sponsored, and all thoughts in this video are purely mine. I've only had the Focus Pro for about a week or so, so this is only going to be a first impressions video, and I'll be doing a full review later on, but so far I'm pretty impressed. Ladder systems have been very popular with filmmakers recently, and I think that's because of the tech in them. I've used other ladder systems in the past, like the PD Movie Live Air 3 Smart, and the difference between the PD Movie and the DJI is that the PD Movie can only do center autofocus. So right now I'm, I'm in the center of the frame, and as long as I stay in the center of the frame and the camera's pointed at me, it will keep me in focus. But as soon as I try to walk out to the sides, it'll lose focus because it only does center autofocus. With the DJI system, they have 76,800 tracking points and up to 20 meters of subject focusing, which means that even though right now I'm in the center, if I walk to the side, it should still keep me in focus. And it doesn't matter where I go, as long as the ladder can see me, it should be able to keep me in focus. And with the increased range of 20 meters, even when I back up all the way to here, it should still be able to keep me in focus. And right now, just even looking at the screen, it's tracking me very well. Even when I run forward like this, I'm perfectly in focus. And I actually think that this might be a game changer for a lot of filmmakers out there. Right now looking at the screen, it's actually focusing on me really well. I think one of the benefits is that pulling focus is really hard and it takes a lot of time to learn it. But even in situations like weddings or if you're shooting cars or sports, being able to pull focus reliably is not really that easy. And with this DJI LiDAR system, this might actually be a game changer to allow you to use your cine lenses and get that cinematic look while still being able to get really good autofocus. Even right here, it's tracking just my face and it's not tracking the monitor that I'm holding. As soon as I cover my face, yes, it will track onto the monitor, but it does recognize that my face is the subject and that's what it's tracking right now. Even just using in situations like this where I just want to be able to film myself, but I want to use my cine lenses, being able to do this reliably without me having to even worry about it is pretty great. So the two options that you can purchase from DJI, the first one is the DJI Focus Pro Creator Combo, and the second one is the All-in-One Combo. I went with the Creator Combo and I'll explain why in a second. The Creator Combo comes in this nice little case, which I love. I've been using cases to store a lot of camera gear recently, and especially when a kit has so many little pieces, it's so nice to have a little case just to store them or carry them around. Inside the case, you have the LiDAR itself, the grip, the motor, a couple cables, and a few other small accessories. In the all-in-one combo, you get the same thing, but with an additional hand grip, which lets you pull focus, control zoom, and adjust iris wirelessly, all on the same unit. This is mainly for people who are working on set with a team, but because I'm usually shooting by myself, I opted not to get the hand grip unit. This is my Focus Pro setup, and as you can tell, this is a handheld setup. This does work with the DJI RS4 Pro, but because I mainly shoot handheld, this is what I'm going to be covering in this video. The main problem a lot of people are having initially with this setup is that it comes with this little gooseneck attachment, which is meant to be placed on the hot shoe. This is a pretty good on bare bones setup, but because I want to rig out the camera, you run into the issue of not being able to put on a top handle or a monitor. I've essentially worked around that by building this little contraption right here. So to build this, we start off with this little NATO to rod attachment, and this goes directly on top of the camera. And because it's a NATO reel, it then allows me to slide a top handle and the monitor on top of it. Then I take the second NATO to rod attachment. This is the one that actually comes with the DJI Focus Pro. And I essentially just remove the gooseneck and I use some washers and longer M3 screws to attach the LiDAR onto it. Then I just connected both of these with this little rod that also comes with the Focus Pro. And again, this would just go on top of the camera. A quick little tip when you're putting this on is making sure that the LiDAR is aligned with the lens as much as possible. And again, because you have the NATO on it now, you can just slide your top handle onto it. And this lets you run a LiDAR in front of your top handle and your monitor. To hook everything else up, you have these two slots in front of the grip where it says LiDAR and motor, and you would just connect the respective cables. Once everything's connected, you can turn on the grip and this will power on the LiDAR and the motor. So head to the DJI Ronin app, Select DJI Focus Grip and head to LiDAR Lens Profile. Here you have three different lens profiles and each profile can store up to five lenses, giving you a total of up to 15 lenses. We're gonna select an empty profile 
select one of the empty slots, and here you can select your lens. So let's go with the DZO lens, we can choose Vespid, and choose the focal length that you're using. Then you would just follow the instructions and calibrate it. But the one downside with using the app is that if your lens doesn't show up in the profile, you can't use your phone to calibrate it and you have to use it with the grip. And this is how you do that. So now I'm gonna walk through how to set up your LiDAR and calibrate your lens. So you're gonna to swipe to the right of your screen and this will bring up the LiDAR view. Clicking the button at the bottom right, will bring up your LiDAR settings. The first thing you wanna do is enter your installation distance, which is the distance from the front of the LiDAR to the marker on the side of your camera, which is where your sensor is. And this is super important because this will enable you to track subjects that are not in the center of the frame. Once that's entered, and for me it's 130 millimeters, we're gonna to go to lens profile. I already have a lens in, but we're gonna pretend like we don't have one. So we're gonna do C2 and click on that profile. And we're gonna add in a lens. So you're gonna set your focal length. So for my case it's 35. And then you're gonna start motor calibration. And this will just spin your motor to hit your start and end points on your lens. So now it says focus on something within 0.5 to 1.5 meters away. So we're gonna focus on this fence and we're gonna make sure that we're in between that range. And once we're in it, we're gonna make sure that the box is on the fence and then on our camera screen, we're just gonna rack focus until we see that the fence is in focus. Once it is, tap the button on the bottom. Step one is complete. Now it says focus on object four to five meters away. So we're just gonna turn and look at this fence this time between that four to five meter range, making sure that the box is on the fence and focus. There. Once it's in focus, tap the button on the bottom again. And now you calibrate it and that's how you add in a lens. So in the menu, there's a few other options that you can customize. So on the main screen on the left side, it shows manual focus and when you click it, you can switch to your autofocus mode. On the right, it shows your lens focal length so that you know which profile you're in. And at the bottom, it shows a visual slider of where you're at between your minimum focus distance and infinity. Sliding up on the screen, you have your first setting, which is dial function. And right now it's set to focus. On the motor, it's currently set to focus, but if I had another motor that was set to zoom, I could change that here so that the dial will control the zoom. The downside is that you have to go to this menu to be able to change from focus to zoom. There's no way to simultaneously control them. Heading back up, we have dial settings. And the first one controls the dial speed, which changes how fast the motor spins when you spin the dial. Next, we have dial damping coefficient, which changes how loose or stiff the dial is when you turn it. And at the bottom, you can reverse the direction that the motor spins. Then we can change what the M button does. So in AF-MF mode, this is where it goes from normal autofocus to manual focus. When you look at your LiDAR view and you're aiming your LiDAR at some subjects, you'll see white boxes around your subjects and you can toggle between which subject you want to track by spinning the dial and then pressing the trigger to lock focus onto them. The next option is AMF MF mode and AMF stands for automated manual focus. And this mode is what I think makes the LiDAR really special. Whenever the LiDAR is focusing, it also turns the dial on the grip so you have a feedback of what the motor is doing. When you want to take over and do manual focus, Instead of switching modes and then waiting that second or two for it to kick in, you can just grab the dial and it instantly puts you in manual focus mode. This is great when the LiDAR is focusing on something but it's not tracking the right thing, so I can immediately take over and focus manually, or in situations where something might be obstructing the subject, instead of autofocus just focusing on other subjects, you can just hold onto the dial so that the main subject stays in focus. Your last option is C1 FN1 button mapping, and this essentially just maps the M button to whatever C1 or your custom button one is on your camera. And the last setting here is focus motor torque. And right now I have it set to medium. And the torque on these motors is actually really strong. So I would definitely make sure that your motor is aligned and tightened properly. Heading back out to the main screen and swiping down, we now have a lock button, which just locks the screen so that you don't accidentally touch it. Next we have Bluetooth and you can connect the Bluetooth from the grip to your camera. And then let's say you use this red button to start and stop recording. Then we have our motor settings and focus motor calibration just calibrates the endpoints on your lens. And if you have a lens where the focus ring just spins forever, you can manually set your start and end points. And then finally, we just have some settings here. We have startup auto tune so that whenever your grip turns on, it'll auto calibrate the motor. And then the rest are just some general settings like language and firmers. And finally, swiping back over to the LiDAR screen, at the bottom left, we have our focus mode. So right now I have it set to wide, 
and wide mode just tracks the center, but whenever it detects a human or a car in the frame, it will track onto that instead. If you tap onto the mode button, it switches it to flex spot mode, and this is where you can just drag a box around the subject that you want to track. I found that wide mode works really well if you want to track onto something specific, but if you want to have center focus and it keeps trying to lock onto a subject, switch it to flex mode and leave the box in the center. The next button is zoom so that if you're using a longer focal length, it makes the LiDAR screen match more closely to what your camera view is. Now the DJI LiDAR focus is pretty good, but there are definitely some flaws with it. In AF-MF mode, you can switch targets by using the dial to select different subjects. In AMF-MF mode, if it starts tracking the wrong subject, there's no way to switch targets because the front dial actually just puts you in manual control mode. So you kind of have to wiggle the camera around and force the LiDAR to select the right subject, and it's not very intuitive. The second thing I don't like is that there's a lot of cables. I do like that the grip powers both the motor and the LiDAR, so I don't have to remember to charge both of those devices separately, and they stick out directly from the LiDAR and the motor. I kind of worked around this by using right angle adapters when I can, but I can't use it on the motor or the grip. And that kind of just makes my camera rig look a little bit messy. The third thing is that this grip is actually pretty big. Comparing this LiDAR grip to a normal side handle, it's about double the size. They advertise a 2.5 hour runtime, which powers the motor and the LiDAR as well, which isn't great. I'm working around this by plugging in the grip since it can be powered off power delivery and plugging it directly into my V-mount. But if I was going to have to resort to that, I wish they just gave me the option of buying a smaller grip so that I could just keep it plugged in but have a smaller package overall. And my last annoyance is calibrating the distance from the front of the LiDAR to the camera sensor. And I don't think there's a way around this because it needs to know the distance to be able to track subjects. But this is kind of annoying because if I ever build a rig on set, and I forget to bring a measuring tape, then I have no real way of measuring the distance between the two. And this isn't really a problem if you always keep your rigs the same, but sometimes rigs have to change because of different usages, and if I ever forget a measuring tape, then I won't really have accurate focus. Again, this is just an initial impressions video since I've only had this for about a week, so I'll definitely be coming out with a full review later once I have the opportunity to test this in more situations, but so far, I'm pretty impressed with it. I hope with DJI's next version, they can fix some of these issues I talked about, and maybe there'll be some future updates that make things a little bit easier. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.